Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I am going to be talking all about why we are switching from the Good and the Beautiful math curriculum over to the Matthew C curriculum for our first grade year next year. I'm going to be going through all of the reasons why we're leaving the Good and the Beautiful and specifically why we chose Matthew C. And then at the end, I'm actually just going to be doing a full unboxing of what we received in the mail yesterday. I'm super excited. Uh, and then I'll also do a little walkthrough of these math blocks because I have learned a lot about purchasing these. So let's get into it. Real quick, if you don't already know me, I'm Jessica. I'm an ex-public school teacher turned author and homeschooling mama to three. I'm also a United States Navy veteran and a genetic breast cancer previvor. And here on this channel, we cover everything from our journey with homeschooling to my journey with breast cancer prevention and everything in between. So welcome. Okay, so let's get into why we are leaving the good and the beautiful math and moving over to the math you see. So there are two big reasons why we're leaving the good and the beautiful. Honestly, overall, I really did love this curriculum. It is near and dear to my heart when we finished finished the last lesson, my daughter and I kind of looked at each other like, oh, you know, we're leaving behind our very first homeschool curriculum ever. Um, but it was not a good fit for us. And these two reasons are one, way too much fluff. And reason number two is that it is a spiral approach. So what I mean when I say that there's too much fluff with this curriculum for our liking is that instead of just providing the student with a problem or even a story problem, there is a whole storyline that's being followed throughout the lesson. So for example, if the lesson for the day is adding, um, instead of saying, you know, Jenny went to the store and found two apples and then she bought three more, how many does she have all together? There is a whole background story about Jenny. So where did Jenny live? Where is she from? Why is she getting the apples? Um, what is she going to do when she gets home with the apples? They'll even have little pictures to go along with the story. And at first I loved that. Like when my daughter was first starting kindergarten, I thought that that was such a neat way to get the kids engaged. But about halfway through my daughter, before I would even finish the story about Jenny, she was already doing the math in her head. So while I think that extra fluff and all the background stories to go along with the math problems is good for many learners, I'm sure it just wasn't a good fit for us. We need something that's a little more dry, dare I say. Um, not boring, but just a little more cut to the chase. Reason number two why we are leaving the Good and the Beautiful math curriculum is because the Good and the Beautiful uses something known as the spiral method or the spiral approach. This is actually something that I'm finding most math curriculums use. There is research to back it up as to why this method is effective. However, I quickly learned that they take the spiral method approach to an extreme. So what is the spiral approach? This is an approach where the student is introduced to a new concept and there's a little bit of review work with it. And then we don't practice that concept again till maybe, you know, a few days later. And each time they reintroduce the concept, they're adding a little bit more. So instead of throwing a whole bunch of the student at once and expecting them to master it, they're kind of dropping little breadcrumbs along the way and then adding to those breadcrumbs throughout. When I say that the good and the beautiful takes this to an extreme, I mean there are really long gaps in between when the concept is first introduced to when it is reintroduced again with a little bit more added to it. It really felt like my daughter, she was forgetting things that we had practiced weeks prior when it was reintroduced again. And when you first look at a spiral method curriculum, especially one that takes it to the extreme like the good and the beautiful, you get the feeling like it's all over the place. That's how I felt. It's like we're doing time, we're doing money, we're doing addition, we're doing greater than, less than, we're doing volumes, we're doing geometry, but it's all sprinkled throughout. And I just don't teach that way. I don't teach best that way. And my daughter, I don't think learns best that way because like we would leave a topic and then circle back to it weeks later. And my daughter was just kind of like, oh, we're doing this again. Like, where did this come from? I thought we were doing geometry yesterday. So it just didn't work for us. So we knew that we were definitely looking for a mastery approach to math, and that is when we found the Matthew C curriculum. Matthew C is a mastery approach based curriculum. And what I mean by that is they are not going to move on to the next concept until they have mastered the first. 
So that freaks some people out a little bit because you feel like your child might be stuck on the same concept for quite a while before they master it and that they might be losing out on all this information um, that they might be learning through the spiral method where a whole bunch is thrown at them in different periods of time. With the mastery approach, they are working on one concept. They're taking a test or a quiz or a, an activity to test out of that concept basically before moving on to the next one. And what I really liked about Matthew C from what I was hearing from everyone was it wasn't like you just mastered it and moved on and never saw it again. There is a little bit of review, not as heavy as a spiral approach, but they are still reviewing the concepts throughout. When I first saw this curriculum at the Florida Homeschool Convention, I was a little intimidated because it had all of these manipulatives and then it came with these packs with these Greek alphabet words on the front and it didn't say, you know, kindergarten, first grade, second grade. It had these words on the front and I had no idea what those meant. I mean, I could kind of get the idea that alpha was somewhere at the beginning, but it wasn't specific to grade level. So that freaked me out to begin with. Um, and then all these math manipulatives, I wasn't quite sure, like, are we solely depending on these? Is my daughter going to be able to do math in the future as an adult without these manipulatives? I've always been worried about her becoming dependent upon the manipulatives because I learned that math you see is all manipulative based, especially in the beginning. They even use manipulatives to tell time which I thought was a little bizarre, but then we watched a few videos on it and it is incredible. I can't believe that I haven't been teaching this this way this whole time. So what was really nice is that the Matthew C website had a placement test and I did that placement test. It's actually more so for the parent to describe what their child is able to do versus what they're not able to do. And it placed my daughter in the alpha level. There is a level before this one, I think it's like primer. And I did see that one at the convention too, but it was a uh, very low level. So that would be more so I would think like maybe a, an incoming kindergartner. It does say that the alpha level is that kindergarten first grade level, but it all depends on your child. So because this is mastery based, my daughter could fly through the alpha level and go right into the beta level, even in the middle of the first grade year versus with the good and the beautiful, we were sticking with kindergarten throughout the entire year. And there was no option to move quicker through the curriculum if we wanted to, because with the spiral approach, I was worried that if I skipped ahead, we were going to be missing out on a new concept that was introduced. When you buy the Matthew C curriculum, you do have to get the manipulatives and the workbooks and teacher guides and things like that. So when you first order, you have the option to order the bundle. So that would be the manipulative blocks along with your workbooks and your teacher guide. These manipulatives can be purchased used. It doesn't matter if you have the new set versus the old set. It's all the same. The only difference is the box that it comes in. So if you notice mine here are in these wooden boxes and the front just kind of slides off like that. If you go on and buy brand new, they're going to come in kind of like a cardboard flip up box. It's actually really flimsy. Um, and I was reading that a lot of parents don't like it. It's a little unorganized versus this old school one uh, has the sliding top and then all of the manipulatives have their own place. So I'll try to show this, right? So they each have their own little section there and each block is a different number value. I'm assuming we haven't got into it yet, but from what I've learned and researched and watched, uh, the manipulatives eventually translate into just visual numbers in the student's head. So no, my daughter will not be a 20 year old walking through the grocery store with her manipulative blocks. She will eventually translate it and be able to do it mentally. So we got these, I think I got them on like Facebook marketplace for 60 bucks. Um, new, I don't wanna say the wrong number, but it's definitely in the hundreds. So aside from the manipulative blocks, you do need whatever level your student is going to be testing into. And that's based on that placement test that I was talking about. So for my daughter, she placed in the alpha level. And uh, from what I understand, from what I flipped through, it's a lot of addition, uh, subtraction, telling time, a lot of the same concepts that she would be getting in the first grade but mastery based. So I'm going to actually just be opening this and showing you exactly what came with this. Also really important to note that when you go online to purchase this, because I already had the manipulative blocks, 
I did not need to buy the full kit. If you buy the full kit, you're buying the manipulative blocks along with everything you need for the student and for you to teach it. But if you have the blocks already, you're going to want to get something called the level up kit. So they call it the level up kit because they're just assuming that if you already have the blocks then your student probably was doing the program last year and you're just leveling up to the next level. In my case, we've never done it before, but I already had the blocks. So this level up kit, I paid $100 for it, and I'll show you everything it came with when I do the unboxing. But one thing that I did check into was you can buy these kits used as well. However, if you buy from the website, you get a digital access code to access all of the digital lessons and it's lifetime. So if I would have bought used, I would have gotten a physical DVD of those digital lessons, but it wouldn't be something that I would have you know, on my computer or flash drive or however I'm going to do it. If you do decide to look into buying used for the student and teacher books, just be careful because I was looking really deeply into like eBay and Facebook marketplace. And a lot of people are selling these, but you have to read the fine print. They always put it right at the bottom or somewhere where you're not looking because they'll be selling a student book and it'll say 30 of the hundred pages have been written in or you know only 10 pages written in and if you're really planning on going all in with this curriculum i would think you would want all clean pages so just look into that if you see one that's a lot less money than new it probably means it's been written in so when i ordered this i paid the hundred dollars online and it just arrived yesterday it came in one box but two separate packages so one box two packages within the box and we are going to go ahead and look into these so I'll start with the teacher's manual, or they call it the instruction manual. It's a hardcover book. I have seen people that have gotten spiral versions of this if it was the older ones, uh, but the newer ones are all hardcover like this, and we are in the alpha level for my daughter. We did do the placement test on their website, and it placed her in the alpha. So, And by the way, the placement test that is on their website is um, for you to take as the parent. This, it, there's nothing that the student's doing on it. It's just questionnaire basically. Okay, so when we look at the curriculum sequence, this is if you were planning on leveling up throughout the years. If you stuck with this curriculum, primer would be introducing math. This is like your kindergarten, preschool age, I assume. Alpha is where my daughter plays. She's going into the first grade. We finished the good and the beautiful kindergarten. So um, it's interesting. I was kind of deciding between these two. She probably could do beta, but I wanna just make sure we're getting all that foundational stuff in since this is a new curriculum to us and then it goes up so we go from addition and subtraction to multi-digit addition and subtraction then we'll move up to multiplication then division fractions decimals and percentages pre-algebra algebra geometry algebra 2 pre-calculus and calculus and then table of contents i just tabbed this just to show kind of a quick overview of what they'll be doing in the alpha level. You can go ahead and pause this and zoom in if you want. And then it jumps into how this curriculum works. And I did already read through this and I thought it was interesting because the length of the lesson, this part right here, of course it varies student to student, but I did learn that you as the parent are actually the one who's going to watch the DVD first and you can have your child watch it with you. This is the DVD I'm talking about where he's teaching it. Um, you watch it as the parent and that will help you teach the lesson to your child or the child can watch it along with you. But the length of the lesson was interesting because it says that um, he wrote, I have spent three days on a lesson and I have also invested three weeks in a lesson. So it really just depends. That's why I like this, it's mastery based. We're not moving on until you've mastered it. So it might take longer for certain lessons. Lesson one goes right into place value. And as you can see, it is just a long explanation of what we're doing. And then it gets into teaching it with the manipulatives. This is all for the parent. This is nothing that I'm reading out loud to the student or anything like that until we get to the examples. So these are the example problems and we would work on these example problems either for a day or a couple days until I feel like she's getting the concept. Jumping over a couple of the pages are landscape like this. This is um, explained in the lesson earlier. I was reading this, they use little, this is the castle, the hundreds castle, this is the tens house and this is the little units house. And so it's a visual for the student to have and the parent. And then it gives you a game that you can play with them. 
and then bam, right into lesson two. So as far as the teacher manual goes, just for lesson one, it's just an explanation for you as the parent, a couple practice lessons, and then the student moves into their workbook. So this is not like your typical, um, you know, I explain a little bit and then you go right into the workbook and then the next day I explain a little bit and then you go into the workbook. It's more so we really nail the concept here and then when I feel good, she can move into the workbook. So this is her workbook, student workbook. All the pages are perforated. You can rip them out if you want. And I tab some pages here. We open this up. This is really nice. It's a little checklist. Um, here's all of the lessons for the entire book. And then each lesson, like for example, place value, there's an A, B, C, D, E, F. This is that mastery. And so she would do lesson 1A, lesson 1B, lesson 1C, and so on, and then take the test at the end. And so you don't even move them into this lesson part until they've gotten the concept with you over here. Got our, all of our lessons here, and then I am going to show you what lesson one looks like. I won't go through it all, I just wanna give you an idea. It's not pretty and colorful like some other curriculums. Uh, but I really think it gets the job done. So you can see this is lesson 1A, and it says turn the paper sideways, color the right number of blocks, and then say the answer. So she would color the blocks, she would say the answer. Very, very simple to start off. And then we would move on. There's a little bit more of lesson A over here. You can see it's very, very short. Then we would move on to B. So already lesson 1B, we would go and check off lesson 1A on that first check checklist that I showed you over here. Here's 1C, 1C. And notice it's the same concept every time. She's coloring the number of blocks, so she would color four and then um, say the answer. And that's what she's doing every time. But the numbers are getting, I believe they're getting a little bigger every time. Yeah, we're adding on some more of the um, hundreds there. And then this is some enrichment. I like this. The E lessons, they have a lot of enrichment. More enrichment. So if you think it might be a little too simple or your child's moving too quickly. And more enrichment. And then right into lesson two. However, you do need this test booklet because you are not supposed to move into lesson two without them passing the lesson one test. And one thing that I found that was very interesting with this was check out this test. Here's lesson one test. Again, it's exactly what we've been doing for the last six lessons. Color the number and say the number of blocks. We'll say the total number, I should say. And then over here, count and write the number, build and say the number, and then just two questions there, and that's it. So it's not some long, grueling test that they have to take, but it is still mastery-based because it's everything they've done throughout the lessons, and then we can get ready to move on to lesson two, and that's just the test. So then you would go back into your teacher booklet, and you would find lesson two, which would be counting to 20. So I do just wanna show you this too. So we're done with the place value with the manipulatives for now. We're gonna go into counting to 20. So I think I marked that one too. Oh, maybe not. Here we go. So here's the teacher portion. This is basically you teaching yourself and doing a few exercises with your child. When you feel good about that, they move into their workbook, lesson two. Again, same thing you saw in the teacher booklet. And then the same thing, 2B. 2C, 2D, 2E, 2F, 2G, here's your, here's your enrichment. And then we would not move on to three until she passes the lesson two test, which I will show you here. Again, it's just short and sweet. There it is, lesson two test, front and back. And that is it for our walkthrough. So thank you. I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions, I'll do another one when we move into the beta version. Uh, but this is it for Alpha.